Clinical evaluation of the shoulder. General evaluation, you need to take the history and provide an exam. Be aware that diabetes and the hypothyroidism can cause adhesive capsulitis. Check the range of motion, both active and passive. Compare it with the other side. Try to differentiate between shoulder pain and neck pain. Shoulder pain tend to be over the posterolateral aspect of the deltoid. Neck pain tend to be localized over the trapezius and may radiate to the upper extremity. Combination of shoulder pain and neck pain pathology is not uncommon. You may want to use the Sperling's test. The Sperling's test is a specific test for evaluation of the cervical nerve root impingement in which the patient extend the neck with lateral flexion and rotation towards the affected side with axial compression. The positive test will reproduce pain in the upper extremity attributed to nerve root compression. So you can see extension of the neck, lateral flexion of the neck, rotation of the neck, and then some axial compression. Then we go to the acromioclavicular joint. And here is the area of the acromioclavicular joint. We use certain tests like cross body adduction test. The patient will be standing or sitting upright with the arm adducted across the body. The examiner will use one hand to push the elbow of the affected arm to maximally adduct the arm across the body with the other hand palpating the AC joint. Positive findings when the patient experiences pain and tenderness at the AC joint, that means there is an AC joint pathology. Now we go to the subacromial impingement cuff pathology. There are multiple tests. The nearest test and Hawkins test for impingement. The drop arm test for rotator cuff tear. The belly press test and left off test for the subscapularis tendon weakness and rupture. The adduction external rotation test for the infraspinatus muscle. And the Jobs test for the supraspinatus muscle. How about the glenohumeral joint and labrum? How do we study it? You got the load shift test for instability. You got the anterior apprehension test for anterior instability. You got the posterior apprehension test and the jerk test for posterior instability. And you got the sulcus test for multidirectional instability. Now we see what test for the biceps tendon and for the slab lesion. For the biceps tendon, we use the speed test. For the slab lesion, we use the O'Brien test. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.